myself a promise I won't quit, keep going till I got it I won't give up till I'm on top Yo, no, I ain't the type to give up If I do something, man, I do it till I get what I want I turn a business out of nothing into something I love I got a poker face, but honestly, I'm not one to bluff I flip a switch, never miss, man, I always stay up Don't let them see you, bitch, always have a plan to stay tough This life ahead of you ain't easy, it was built to be rough But that's what makes a personality is tragedy, bruh uh, so keep your head on your shoulders Now we ain't out here moving rocks We out here moving boulders Now we ain't getting postal rides We out here making posters And we ain't got nothing to hide We move forward like soldiers You better wake up for the pay stub Or you'll pay up Don't make love to the game, bro. Fuck the game up Change up for your rain stuff To your greatness Same us for the way up Play the game, bro. Never stop, I'll get it if I want it Gotta make to myself a promise I won't quit, keep going till I got it I won't give up till I'm on top, yeah You know I'm always honest There ain't no way I'm ever stopping I won't quit, keep going till I got it I won't give up till I'm on top, yeah You know I'm always honest There ain't no way I'm ever stopping I won't quit, keep going till I got it I won't give up till I'm on top, yeah gentlemen and welcome to the recap of attitude week seven and we are doing this because we had some technical difficulties i am nene Warkers ember and alongside of me is a lovely alori morgana how are you darling i'm doing very well nene how are you today i am doing wonderful well ladies and gentlemen like i said we are going to recap episode seven for you so let's get this show started like I said, we started out the show with Mr. Flex interviewing our undisputed champion Isaiah the Hornet Jenkins. Ask him how he would feel if Ren wins against TLC by a pinfall in the match. Isaiah explained he wanted Ren to win. He wants to fight Ren. Mr. Flex going on to ask how he feels about knowing Ren's record is impressive. He never loses. Isaiah points out only he wins because he fights dirty and that won't work on me. Mr. Fox asks, why won't these tricks work? This is because there won't be any DQs. It won't count out. There'll be no held back. We'll fight a no holds barred for the championship. And Isaiah walked away. I mean, come on. You know what? After listening to that interview, it feels like Isaiah has gone back to being his very egocentric self again. You would have thought he would have learned after, like, all the stuff you went through before. You know, I don't know. I mean, Isaiah's so full of himself, but he's going up against somebody who's even more full of himself with Ren. It's very true. Very, very true. I don't know. That I think I think Isaiah may have bitten off more than he can chew on this one. I don't know. I mean, this is going to be one for the ages with this one. I mean, Ren. Ren's going to be having an opponent today, you know? He's going to be facing the hardcore champion, so we'll have to see how that one comes out. But after that, we saw that video of TLC coming into the arena. Gets out of his car, there are no fans in the arena whatsoever. Kicks out his phone, he sees all that hate mail and comments, and he gets really, really sad about it. You know? That did, well, that broke my heart. That did break my heart for TLC. He looks so defeated. And then that one fan passed him by and TLC offered the autograph and the fan totally ignored him and continued walking by. I mean, poor TLC has no idea what is going on. He's so used to the crowd wanting to be by him. I mean, he used to go into the stores to buy a Slurpee and they used to steal the Slurpees out of his hand. Now they're not even acknowledging him. Ugh. Everything that's going on with TLC right now is breaking my heart. I mean, he's worked so hard. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not the biggest TLC fan in the world, but this is even, you know, tearing up my, you know, you know little bitty heart straight. And that saved something of your little black heart. Mm. Right? I know. <laughs> like the Grinch is making my little heart, you know, kind of beat a little bit stronger. But in our first match, we saw that newcomer rock the rock star face Karma Star. You know, Karma's been creating a lot of chaos between Danny and Wish lately, even going as far as it interfering in their one-on-one match last week. She also has a big strength disadvantage against Rock, 
Will she use her miniature key DJ quick to distract the balance to balance it out? You know, both women met the center. Ross got control quickly with that wrist lock into the hammer lock into a monkey flip. You know how much I love this monkey flip, you know? I love those monkeys. You jump out your chair. You love it. You jump out your chair. Yeah. Then Karma's stunned. Ross comes back quickly with those, you know, some chops into a fisherman suplex into a pin. You know, she got that one count. You know, I was actually very, very impressed at Ross right away with that one count. You know, I mean, yeah. But, you know, Quick came up on the apron, you know, started distracting Ross. I don't know. He's kind of, I, I don't know about that Quick guy, you know, he kind of was really distracting. Look, the way I think Quick has been to the school of the Stooge, but he's doing the same BS that Sabrina does. So it's very sort of like, I'm seeing similarities that I really don't like. Mm, I don't know. But then Carver came back with that chop block, got her in a neck wrench and a few strikes, and got Rock into that figure four head scissors. But Rox is a lot bigger than her, a lot stronger. She dragged Karma to the rope, you know, and Karma held that as long as she could before she got that DQ. Rox got up, hit Karma with that big boot and a haymaker. Karma got up frustrated, but Rox wasn't backing down, came back with a neck breaker and put Karma in the sharpshooter. But Quick jumped back up on that apron real quick and started distracting Rox again, who broke that hold. Karma came back out, went and swept Rox's leg out from under her and put her into a figure four again and held her again, you know. But Karma got him off the ropes and, you know, into a scoop slam, you know, Ben, you know, Rox got a few more chops in there. He got, and he got right back up there again. He got right back up there again and went and did it again, trying to go and do it. And he's right back into distracting her again. Right back up distracting her again. And then Karma went to go and try to do a clothesline to Rock. But man, when she went and did that top rope, Karma went and hit her instead of hitting Rock. He, he went, Karma went and hit quick right off the apron, in which Rock capitalized and put Karma in the trouble cup and went and put Karma right to sleep and capitalized it for the win. That was the best thing we have seen in a long time. We were rooting for Quick to get knocked the F out. And he deserves it. Can you, do you remember what he said? About how Vox was too big and she needed to lose weight and her makeup. He had that coming. He so yeah. earned that knockout. That was beautiful. Mwah. It Did worked out perfectly. Stuff? But then, right after that, we saw Wish and Fire come out. Fire was madder than hell. Wish was calling out for Dana to come out and fight right here and right now. Wish explained that she had two reasons for revenge. The kidnapping, a.k.a. the sleepover, you know, and then what happened last week. Wish and Fire were demanding that Danny came out right now. Danny just was com wasn't coming out. Wish and Fire were getting more and angry and said, come out now or I'm going to come out there and drag you out. Yeah, but you know, Rose came out and just said, you know, uh-uh, no, you guys need to calm down. And what happened last week is unacceptable and won't slide on her show while she's the DM. She also announced that the season finale will be Danny with Sabrina and Wish with Fire in a Lumberjill match. And Carmen will be banned from the arena. And if she shows up, she'll be fired. Wish actually turned around, thanked Rose and said Fire's wish from episode one to get revenge on Danny will finally be granted. No. You know what? We've been waiting for this wish to be granted now for so long. Will it ever be granted? Yeah, but here's the thing about this, Mogata, okay? You gotta remember, a couple seasons ago, you know, this was all buried. I thought this was buried a few seasons ago between these two. You know, they were in the dungeon, you know, in a cage. You know, they were buried in that bird cage. I thought this was buried. Why are they bringing it all back up again? I mean, does it have to do with karma? You know, I mean, what do you, what is it with these two? They have a rivalry, and this rivalry stems in hatred. Yeah, but that's, that's the only why way I they explain it. That's why they had that dungeon match to bury it and get it over with. Is it Karma who's bringing this back up again between these two, or is it just a festering wound that you know Karma just decided to go and unbend? 
advantage between these two. May but it could be anything with these lot at this precise moment in time. These ladies on this roster at the moment are out for blood. They well, all just want to take each other out. Well, you gotta remember when Karma came in, she said she was going to rule the ladies roster. Yeah, but then she got her ass handed to her quite a few times as well, so I'm not sure if she's ruling anything. Well, I don't know. Karma is a bitch, and she's kind of proving it. Oh, then, yeah. <laughs> then we saw a video of Red walking into the production room, then a few seconds later he was seen walking out and leaving the camera frame. What was up with that? We have to get security on that door. We, just, we need to. We cannot keep leaving that door unsecured now. I mean, I can't, I can't even get to the production room. And I'm small. I was so, about to say, how can you not get in there? Can't you just sort of crawl through a gap? <laughs> I know, right? I mean, they don't even let me in the production room. How can he just walk in there like, you know, he owns the place? Then we had the match between Red and TLC where Red had to win by a pinfall to be able to face Isaiah for that Undisputed Championship. Red was frustrated to begin with from not being able to face Isaiah for his Undisputed title any time so far this season. TLC on the other hand, the hardcore champ, is also frustrated from all the hell he's been going through with Hal Jackson. Both men are going to take their frustrations out on each other, but Red has more on the line to stake here. What do you think about that one? Uh... TLC's head was not in this fight at all. You could tell from the moment he came out and the crowd just started booing him. He, he'd already lost it mentally. He was not there. He just didn't seem to be the TLC we all know and love. Well, well, the bell rang and both men were soaking around each other. Red goes in for the lockup. TLC goes in for the wrist lock. They, then they start ten, ten, he started ten, tightening up. Red shoved TLC off into the corner. TLC hit it hard. Red started chopping TLC and then wrapped TLC's knee around the rope. Wrenching that knee, goes for a little coast-to-coast -coast action with a hard splash, but TLC bolts out of the way and Red missed. I was kind of a little bit impressed with TLC on that one. You know, Red went face first into that turnbuckle and TLC went into the monkey flip, which kind of excited me. I had two monkey flips right in a row. I was kind of happy. <laughs> Hey, yeah, we, have to, we almost have to tie you to your chair. <laughs> you know, right, right went out of that corner. I mean, TLC got a little bit of, you know, height out of that. You know, gave Red a couple of chops, goes goes off the ropes into a clothesline, but missed. You know, he missed, you know, and, you know, t then he hit TLC with that Katara Crusher, goes for the pin, only got a two count out of that. You know, I was like, wow, just a two? Sarah must have been off her game on that. But Red still capitalizes, put TLC in that sharpshooter. Red was asking TLC if he tapped. TLC started refusing and reached for the rope. And I was actually impressed that Red released it before a four count. What about you on that one? Do you know what? That match, up to now, just watch when we were watching it, and we were there, and you heard the change in the crowd as it was happening. As the crowd started to start cheering TLC again, and Ren started to get booed. I don't know if you noticed it, but Ren's attitude changed just like TLC's did. Yeah, it did. Well, TLC got out going for a lockup into a wrist lock, hits Ren with an elevated bulldog, goes for a pin, but he only got a two count out of that. Both Red and TLC were trading blows back and forth. Red hit TLC with a double A slide buster, picked him up, hitting him with a black heart fury, and whipped TLC into the corner, then hit him with a hell of a combo. Dragged TLC to the center, goes for another pin, but just for another two count. Both men started fighting it out again. Red irate TLC, whipped him into the ropes, and clotheslined him over the top rope. Sarah started counting it out. Red started arguing with Sarah to start counting faster. He looked at TLC over the air and does the best moment ever. TLC picked up Red, hit him with a diamond cutter back in the ring. Hal's intro hit. TLC walked to the ropes on the ramp side and waited. Red got back into the ring, stopped TLC, who turned around. Red hit him with his signature, the Abracadabra, which is his finisher, goes for the pin. One, two, three. 
Red wins that match by a pinfall. Gets to face Isaiah in the season finale. Did Red, did Red set up that video to be played to shock TLC so he could get that pin? Psychological warfare. That's what it was. Psychological warfare. I he mean, got to TLC's head doing that. I mean, was he the one that actually was out when he was doing the production room? Was he paying off the production monkeys? I don't know. I guess we'll have to find out later. But right after the match, when TLC was going in the back, who do we see sitting there on some boxes on his phone? Was Hal Jackson. TLC walks to Hal and says, I know it wasn't you who caused your media play, but you caused every other. And Hal cuts him off and says, what do you want? Coming to attack me again? You won't get your fan back. TLC says, my life is ruined because of you. I'm nothing without my fans. What do you want from me? Hal looks up and says, your championship and the match, the, the match of your the match comes to your nightmare. A tables match. Hal says, you agree and I'll make everything go away. Chelsea was desperate and agrees. Hal admits to everything. Hal admits to switching the medicine labels, ruining his car. He even finances the patient to sue TLC. Hal looked at the cameraman and shouted at him, Did you get all that? Did you? Hal says the only regret is the patient survived and you did get accused of murder. Chelsea's how dare you and Hal TLC attacks Hal and they start beating on one another until Hal puts TLC through a table. Hal says, when this happens next week, your hardcore championship is mine. So basically, Hal set it all up. He set up the medicine label to be wrong. He went and set up, you know, the car. He went and set up the man to, you know, accuse TLC for malpractice. It was all everything. It was all Hal. TLC was actually innocent of it all. You know, I don't know whether how is just being overly cocky or just being plain stupid. I mean, why would you say that on camera? We have video evidence now. I don't know. I have no idea why he would do that. I think I, someone's going to have to slip that to the police, I think. Oh, they're going to see it anyway. Because now he's, he's kind of written his own sentence there. Well, I guess so. But then we get to our main event, that Extreme Women's Championship Extreme Rule Match between Venom the Kraken and Akita the Huntress. Oh remember, at the last, remember folks, at the last meeting it was a no contest between these two ladies because Mika and Rebel came out and took out not just one, but two referees, plus our security. But they dragged the referees away with them. I mean, come on. Poor Sarah and Leave both ended up being dragged away. Who does that? Reverend you know, Amiko by the looks of it. The only loophole to actually go and get a match to be a no contest, you know, where there's no rules whatsoever. They found it. So, you know, and Mika vowed there won't be a match that doesn't include her in it, you know, so I mean, they found the loophole. So, Mika, you know, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Mika, you know. I, I mean, I've wanted Mika to go evil, but I mean, I'm not sure I even like this evil Mika now. But both women met in the center of the ring. Nikita gives Vetter a handshake of respect, and Vetter gives Nikita a bar of respect. Then a chop start by Nikita into a European uppercut off the ropes into an arm drag kick down of the mat, still holding on, standing Veta right back up. Veta quickly trans into a lock up to a side waist lock into a hammer lock, right into a some punches. Have you ever noticed Veta does that transition so smoothly that you barely even notice it's happening? She's a pro. It's one of her spe I swear it's a special talent. She's just amazing at it. But then Nikita comes back with a knee strike into a Pol Polish hammer, putting Vetter into a side headlock, striking it hard, and Vetter just turned around, kicking Nikita onto the back, going for a quick pin, but she only gets a one count. I mean... It was way too early for a pin at that stage. Yeah, it was, but Vetter recovered quickly, picking up Nikita, slamming Nikita face first into the mat, but Nikita pick picks Nikita back up, hitting her with a dream street. 
said Stabby Gotter. The kid hits better with a drop, to, a drop toe hold, setting better sprawling. Better back up hitting her with, you know, picking better back up hitting her with the signature feral attack. Going for a quick pin, but only gets a one count on that. Telling you, it was way too early in this match for them to be going for some pins like that. But hey, there's a belt on the line. Never stop, no so. Very true, but these two ladies are, they are pros in every sense of the word. Yep. Nikita, yep, Nikita went and picked Veta back up, but Veta gets a quick surge of energy, knocks Nikita down and starts pounding on her, hitting her with some elbow strikes. Nikita gets back up and hits Veta with, and Veta hits her with her signature, the Yagosa, and goes for a pin and gets a two count this time. Hey, I gotta give, I have to give Veta some credit, okay? Veta is the only person that I know that could actually probably take Nikita on one on one. Oh, definitely. She has the drive, she has the skill, she has the strength, and she has the honor to do it. And Nikita respects that. So, but these two, when they're matching up, is amazing to watch every time. Every time. Vena gets back up, Nikita gets up stunned, Vena puts her in a side headlock, and then all of a sudden, Nikita goes and gets a surge, and Gorilla presses Vena and drops her, goes for a pin, but now. Nikita only gets a two count on Vena. Vena gets that shoulder up real quick. I was impressed on that. I I don't even see how how Vena went and got her shoulder up. I don't know. I mean, Nikita's a big woman. She, I I don't see how she got that shoulder up. It's pure determination. Pure Nikita determination. went. Nikita went and whipped Veta into the ropes. Nikita off the ropes as they, she comes off the ropes. There are two two huge hooded figures. Jump over the barricade and start messing with the ring. I was like, I, did you see them jump over the barricade? Yeah, I did. And I was sort of, hang on, those hoods look quite familiar. I actually thought it was something else for a second. And then we realized who it was. And they started messing with the ring as Nikita and Veta came off the, ri off the ropes. The ring collapsed. Literally just imploded in on itself. I was like, what the hell is going on? I was, was kind of fearful for us at one point. I really was. I really expected to fall towards us. I was like, oh, shit. But Nikita, yes. Nikita, Vetter, and Sarah all get up. Nika and Rebel start running away as Rebel is cackling like a mad fool. Sarah goes and rings the bell and declares a no contest again. Again, another no contest. How? How do they keep getting away with this? How do they keep finding all these loopholes? Well, that is probably the best loophole they found, because no ring, no match. That's all true. Veta finally snaps and screams, Okay, Mika, okay, you want in, you are in. We'll make you, and I will make you regret it. I was just, I have never seen Veta lose it like that. I honestly haven't. No, Ven is usually very cool and calm and level-headed, but it seems like a lot of people are pushing people's buttons nowadays, and they are gonna, they will regret it because the cool and calm ones are the ones that are the most dangerous, I find. So, and I'm sorry, why would Rebel want to get anywhere near Nikita after what happened with Jamba? Right? Year? But Jamba was there. He was chilling. I don't know what's going on with those three, but so, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like our season finale is going to be Wish with Fire and Miss Danny with Sabrina in a Lumber Jail match. All rules apply, and Carver is banned from the arena. We will see Hal Jackson and TLC in a tables match for the Hardcore Championship. We will see a Triple Threat Extreme Rules match for the Extreme Women's Championship between Venom the Kraken, Nikita the Huntress, and Mika Great Cloak. And we will also see for the Undisputed Championship, Ren Blackheart take on Isaiah the Hooded Junction. Ooh, we a no holds barred match. All three belts are up for grabs in the season finale, ladies and gentlemen, so this is one show you do not want to miss. I don't know. I think I'm going to be what belts are going to change hands. I don't know. I mean, if all three belts are up, I mean... TLC is putting his belt up against Hal Jackson in a tables match, and we know TLC do not like, does not like table matches. We know he does not like those. I don't blame him. He's been through enough of them. <laughs> He's been through enough tables. He almost ran out, okay? 
I know. And then you've got that triple threat extreme rules match between Veta the Kraken, Nikita the Huntress, and Mika Greycloak. Anything goes there. It's, it's, it's anything goes. Anything goes. You could use anything. Extreme rules. Anything could be used in that match. Right, Nene, well, hide you because you're small enough to use as a weapon. Oh, I'm gluing <laughs> myself to the chair. And <laughs> then we've got that undisputed championship between Isaiah and Ren is a no holds barred match. That's another one where anything's going to be able to go. So, yeah. Right, so basically, we need the medic on standby, we need the chiropractor on standby. Uh, oh, security on standby. Well, I don't know. I'm. Security don't seem to be helping for anything because they got their asses kicked a couple weeks ago, so yeah. We should get you to be security. I think that'll work. You're scary. I'm not scary. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was the recap of week seven. I am Nene Mortez Ember. I am Ogaga Martel Bloodrose. And we will see you at the season finale on Monday, June 19th. Don't forget to come and get your tickets.